Okay guys, this is Eric Wagner with Wagner Racing. We're back with this KMJ Assault Head and I'm trying to show you what's been done. This is the ported chamber. This is the unported chamber. So you can see how, see what, how different it looks. I'm going to tell you how I do it so this way you can do it. I actually don't mind sharing information about this head because I don't port a lot of these. But let's get to it. Alright, the first thing you're going to need is these. These are um, they're old valves. They don't even have to be great valves. And what you need to do is you need to take them to your machine shop. And it's got this is a 210 diameter head. So that's good. So in other words, it's two hundredths. Or not two hundredths, sorry, two tenths bigger than the 208. And what I do is I have I have my own valve refacer, but I put in my valve refacer and I do a 45 until the margin's almost gone. See, it's almost gone. And the reason why you do that is because when you put it, take this, this is a junk valve. And you put it into the hole, and you can see over, that what it's doing is it's blocking you from grinding your seat angle, and it allows you to grind here. Okay. Now the other one you need is this is a one six, same thing. Now it's got a little bit more of a margin on it, um, so not as much, but you want it pretty thin. These will never be used in a live engine, so you can get jump valves, be fine, and do the same thing. Show it and what this is going to do is it's going to protect our seats when we're grinding. Okay. Now you all need on this one I use three tools, so three bars I should say. The first one is this one. This is my grinder. By the way, you're like, what is that? Well, it's just, this is a Fordham SR grinder. It's electric. So it's got its own motor speed thing that can speed up or slow down. I have a couple, but anyway, um, this is what I use. You can use air; it doesn't really matter. When I first initially started porting, I actually used air, but the sound of the compressor going eight hours a day and the sound of the grinder was annoying. So like this full tilt, this is this is slow, but you don't hardly hear it. But anyway, some people hate this because the hand, it's not a lot for them to grind, but to me, I hold it like a pencil. So it's actually held something like this. Now, of course, I have gloves on, but that's how I hold it. And you can kind of tell because... You can see on my hand where it's burned. But anyway, um, so I'll hold it like so. And what you do, this is one of my first tools. This is a, oh, this is a 3 eighths. Um, it's not cross cut, so a 3 eighths oval um, rasp. This one's the first one you should use and you'll probably use the majority of it. The second tool that I use is burr is this one. This is a half inch oval cross cut. And the last thing I use, is this this is a mandrel and this is holding a one it's holding this cartridge roll sorry it's holding this cartridge roll three eighths by one one and a half eighty grit so you can get these from Goodson there's your partner um the burrs you can get them from just about anywhere but this is a six inch long as a note usually when you have a faster speed and you try using these long burrs they wobble because they just get moving i don't have a problem with them but some of the other grinders for sure do if i put in my air grinder it does that too i rarely use air so it doesn't have so much problem my electric one by the way this Fordham goes something like 12,000 rpms or something but you don't really need a whole lot of speed when doing the chambers so this Mandrel, you can also get some goods and you just put the cartridge roll on and twist it down. So the first thing I do though, is I'm using my 3 8 rasp. Now if I'm in it here, I'm just showing you, I'm not going to turn on. I will grind here using this. And I'll start grinding here and then I'll start pushing this one up. What I'm trying to do is get rid of this ledge that's right there. My little bit over here. Here we go. I'll try to get rid of that ledge right here. I'm doing it from this angle first. Now notice I'm trying not to hit the deck, but I want to mill the heads anyway. But if you're worried that you're going to mill the heads, what you could do just, I mean, worry that you're going to nail it because it's real easy for you to go whoops and then right into the deck. If you get in the, this range here, you're probably not, it looks ugly, but it's really not going to affect the form, performance too much. But if you start like whoops and get down here, especially over here though, and whoops, or even like here and you have a little whoops, um, you're gonna have to have a mill because that's in the firing and the firing not here. So I think it was like a circle So but anyway to avoid that what you can do 
you're gonna not study with your hands, don't worry about it, is take some real thick tape and tape the deck and then cut out around here. Anyway, go in here and grind like this. Oops, see what I mean? It's really easy when you're not trying. I know it's grind here. And I'm trying to get this top angle cut to come right into the chamber. And then I'll do the same here. And I usually go back and forth across here, and I usually hit across here. And that's it for that view. And then I'll flip it around. So let me do it. Right Bam. So. And I'll go around here and I'm going to hit this again. I'm just trying to blend it in. But if you notice, see that ridge there? That's where the, the cutter was hitting. So I use this here. And then I switched to. Sorry for messed up view for a little bit. One hands to this. And the reason why I use the bigger one is because it's not, it won't, I can do it a lot with that too. Like if I wanted to from this view, I could use just this one. But the biggest thing is it's cutting more material and leaves me. If you just use a small one, sometimes you end up with like little ridges. So a big burr you can use here so it gets it more smooth transition. See what I mean? Looks smoother. I'll do that here. Then I'll do the same over here and try to get rid of that little one. See how it's kind of gone. And then uh, that's about it. Now. What you want to see is something looks like this when you're finally by the way last step then i just use the cartridge roll because it looks kind of rough and then just whoop, whoop, same thing um what you want to see is the top cup come out and right into the chamber now if you notice like on the exhaust on here let me get my pointer again if you notice on the exhaust here there is still a little bit of a ledge right there the reason why is because i didn't drop the valve job down enough well, I could have dropped it down more, but what you end up doing is sinking the exhaust valve job because this is from the factory and it's too deep. So the only way to fix that is to sink the valve job so it comes in then you can grind it out. But it's a horrible idea because what it does is it moves the exhaust valve further down in here. Make your chamber volume grow. So I brought it where it should be, um, the exhaust valve job, and left that little notch there because it looks like I haven't blended in, but it's deeper than the seat itself. On crappy heads, it's usually what happens. A good valve job on decent heads, the valve job that they have comes all the way up in. And when I hit mine, I never have this issue, but it's dug in. I know it's really hard to see, and you probably can't even notice it. But I can. So you can see it right there. Because it should be top cut in. But anyway. So there's that. Next thing I'm going to do is blow it off and flow it. But that should, you know, put that flow numbers with it. So. You so far have seen the stock flow numbers after the valve job. Now you see how the chamber work. So I'll flow it real quick and I'll tie it with this video and put them together. Okay, guys, back on the flow bench here again. Uh, chamber's reported. Uh, we'll see what it did. Some of you like to see graphs, so I'll kind of give you an idea. And by the way, you can see these notes at the top. So the first cylinder one would be stock. Cylinder two is when I cut the valve job. Cylinder three would be a port of the chambers. This is the graph I'll help you see. See the dark blue line? And I'll show you the raw, raw numbers in a minute. So I don't feel like I'm robbing it. But you can kind of get an idea. This blue line is what it is now. So this is after the chamber is important. And you can see how much it picks up over the others. Just to give you an idea, this is the start. That yeah, blue line now, it's all the way down here. And this is it right now on the intake side. And if we look at the exhaust side, this really did shock me. So the exhaust lines are down here. These are the exhaust lines. So this is, I'm gonna light up, when it goes red, this is the ported chamber one, that one. You can tell it's it's not as good as at the peak, but everywhere else down here, it's so much better. And we'll look at the raw numbers, like I said, in a minute. So that's where it is now, compared to this is where it started. So let's uh, look at the raw numbers and see the differences. Okay, here we go. So just to recap, cylinder one, out of the box. Cylinder two, valve job, nothing more. Cylinder three, this is after the chambers are ported. Now, if you notice there's a difference in difference here, what this is is the computer program is telling me the difference in flow number between cylinder one to what you're doing now. So how much does it pick up? So if it's positive like all these are, it that's telling me it picked up flow numbers. So if we look again, I'm gonna go right handed, sorry. So we look again, it gains everywhere except for the very peak, at the, which is 800 lift. That's because there's no pour work done. So, and it still backs up. Um, we'll fix this when we start grinding, actually. But if you look at it, gain of six, gain of 10, nothing. Exact same, we're at a three. Uh, four, gain nine, 12, and 26 CFM. 272 CFM. 
I would like to see this one flow as much as the stock AFR 210, uh, race ready one. It may not happen because I'm not gonna make the ports very big. That's a goal to shoot for. And they, and in case you're wondering, the AFR 210 flow 294 at 600 and we're at 272. Well, 273, we haven't done any port work. Um, the exhaust, it gained a loss there, but it gained everywhere else except for at the very peak. And again, it's because we really haven't done any grinding. So pretty good for just the chamber work. So if you did anything else, all you did was a valve job and chamber work, peak numbers gained 26, and for the, you didn't lose pretty much no loss on the intake side and pretty much no loss on the exhaust side. I mean, three CFM at the peak is really not that big a deal. So in other words, just chamber, or, um, valve job and chamber work, worth the power. Definitely worth power. Probably I'm gonna say just a gain, rough guess, I mean, gain 25 CFM, I'm just gonna rough guess that you're gonna get 25 horsepower over the, out of the box just doing that. So the next step I'm gonna report is just the vein because he's so many people do this and thinking they're gaining a whole lot of CFM. And I don't think you will, you'll be surprised. But anyway, that'll be the next one. So probably the next video. But there's your results for chamber and valve job.